Enough already. It's time to move on. Episode 86. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit-generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Profit with Law. I am your host, Moshe Amsel. And for this episode, I wanted to get back to talking to you from the heart and and just uh, show up and have a nice, good solo episode that had absolutely no specific intention other than to recognize what's going on around us and maybe help you see things in in perspective in another light or, or something like that. So we're still right now dealing with this COVID pandemic. And my observation is that people, you know, initially when it first started, it was uh, a a absolute shock to the economy, to our way of life, to everything that we do. And people were literally in a state of panic. And now, two, three weeks later, we are sitting in a position where we're starting to recognize that this might be something that we need to do for a while longer. You know, maybe to the end of April, maybe to the end of May, maybe if no cure is found, maybe we need to do this for six months until it's completely gone and there's no more cases coming up. I mean, what if we all leave our houses and there's a new flare up and then we got to do this all over again, right? Nobody wants to do that. So if they don't find a, a drug that will prevent it, that will stop it, that will cure it, that will, uh, you know, any of those. There's a good chance that this has to continue until we've completely eradicated this COVID-19 from our midst. So at this point, we're starting to the, the, the endorphins, the adrenaline of the sudden shock of everything that's happening and, this, and being thrown into the situation where our kids are home, where schools are canceled, we can't go out with friends. Now we're in this situation where we've kind of gotten used to life the way it is. It's not great. It's not exciting. We really want to go back to the way things were, but we've gotten into this mode where we're, you know, we, we've got a rhythm going. We know where, who's going to bring our groceries or if we are going to go to the grocery store. We've, you know, got the cooking schedule down. We've got the kids schedule down. We figure out how we're working, how we manip- um, navigating working with our spouse. Uh, you know, all those things have started to really just kind of get ironed out, get fleshed out. And you know what? Even the, the influx of information, that was available to us, that was coming at us from all ends. Every email, COVID-19, COVID-19, this, that, COVID-19. Even that is going to start slowing down now because it's the emergency, the urgency is wearing off. And this creates yet another opportunity for us. And it's an opportunity to do a few things. Number one, it's an opportunity to just appreciate where you are. All around us, people are dying. There are people that I am sure that every listener who's listening to this knows somebody who has a relative that passed away from this thing, right? We're all within a a second degree connection of somebody who's experienced death from this. And so we know that we're not immune. We know that this thing is real. And yet, we're in our homes listening to this. You either had the virus and, and, and got past it, overcame it, or you didn't get it. And if you just stay home, you won't get it and use precautions, right? Hopefully, right, of cleaning our groceries and cleaning the mail and washing our hands every time, you know, every time we come in from the outside and being careful not to walk near other people, talk near other people. If you're doing all those things, you're not getting it, Right. So be thankful for your health. 
Be thankful for the fact that you didn't get it for the fact or the fact that you survived it. Be thankful for the fact that anything else that's happening in business in relation to money, all of that can be overcome with time. You can get out of any financial mess with time. I mean, look at anybody who's gone bankrupt. Look at, I mean, look even at the president of the United States of America. You know, Trump went bankrupt. And look at where he is now. He's the president of the United States of America. Anybody can recover from financial ruin. Money is not where it's at. Money is just a tool. And if the tool is temporarily unavailable, it's temporarily unavailable. It will become available again. So don't lose your mind over money. Recognize that you are safe. Your family is safe. And if you did lose somebody, if, if I'm talking to you and you did lose somebody, number one, my heart goes out to you. I feel your pain. And I suffer with you. At the same time, you get to bereave the person you've lost. You get to decide how you're going to commemorate their name, how you're going to remember them. And you also get to decide how you're going to live the rest of your life. You get to choose. You have to make a choice. You get to choose whether you want to live optimistically, whether you want to live with dreams and aspirations for the future, or whether you want to crawl up into a corner in a ball with no motivation whatsoever. You get to make that choice. And you have the power to rise up past adversity, past loss, past pain, and you get to decide who you become. One of my favorite books of all time is Living Forward by Michael Hyatt and Daniel Harkavy. And in that book, Michael Hyatt and Daniel Harkavy lay out how we go through life and we end up drifting. We end up doing things by rote, doing things by just where life takes us and not being intentional with where we're going. And what happens is if somebody drifts and they never resolve it, they end up to the, getting to the end of their life. And if they have the opportunity to face death, to realize that they're going to die, they end up dying with regret. They end up dying thinking, I could have done more. I could have been better. I could have accomplished something different. And that is something that you, you want to avoid at all costs, which is why they lay out in that book how to create a life plan for yourself so that you don't get to that point. And now might be a good time to pick up that book. Now might be a good time to, I don't know if it's available on Audible. If it is, we'll link it up in the show notes. Now might be a good time to listen on that audiobook or to read it. It's an easy read, but you know what? It has some powerful stuff in it. It has an exercise that you do where you write your own eulogy. You write what you want people to talk about when you die. Now, why would you want to do that? You want to do that because if you don't focus on making that happen, it's not going to happen on its own. You have to choose to take the steps necessary. Every day you have to wake up and decide that you're going to be a better person than the day before. Every day has to be a better day for you if you want to be satisfied with your life at the end. Now we're not going to we're not going to conquer every single day. We're going to have bad days. We're going to have days that we lose. We're going to have days that we don't move forward. But if you have too many of the days where you don't move forward, you're going to end up somewhere where you didn't want to be. You need to constantly course correct. Uh, one of the examples that I've heard used is that if a, a plane leaves Los Angeles LAX heading to JFK and sets its course and the pilot never corrects course along the way, they can end up down in Florida or up in the northern, northern Canada 
what happens is a plane is constantly being moved by the wind and the plane needs to constantly course correct along the way. Little minor corrections, little tiny corrections along the way is what keeps it en route to its destination. In life, it's not big things that make the difference at the end. When we get to the end of life, it's not big, major things. It's little tiny steps, little tiny course corrections that we could have made on a daily, weekly, monthly basis that would have made all the difference to us. Yet instead, we often allow life to just happen. We don't make that correction. We just stay drifting. We just let things happen to us and we take life for granted. And then you get to the end and you wonder how you ended up in Florida when you meant to be in New York or how you ended up in Canada when you meant to be in New York. That's a metaphor. But your life, you only get one shot. You only get one chance. So you get to choose at every step of the way. And now during this pandemic is yet just another one of those moments. Another one of those moments where you get to choose how you're going to show up. How are you going to behave? How are you going to think? How are you going to act? You get to be an example, a shining example to your children. You get to be a leader to your law firm. You get to be a leader in your community. You have an option to do that today. The tools are in front of you. Look around you at the people who are showing up for their community and look around you at the people who are not. What is the difference between them? The difference between them is simply their own clarity of what they're here to do. So I ask you, what are you here to do? What are you here to do? The last two weeks, the last three weeks, granted, you had an excuse. This new uh, calamity, this new situation, this emergency was consuming everyone's thoughts. It was consuming everything that you did. If you didn't do anything productive during the last three weeks, no problem. You get a pass. But enough already. Stop using it as an excuse. Stop using it as a reason to underperform. Stop using it as a reason to not show up. Every single day, you get to wake up in the morning and give gratitude and thanks for the fact that you are alive and breathing that day. You get to choose to start your day that way. You can choose to think about what am I going to do today that's going to leave a mark on this earth that is going to be more positive than it would have been if I didn't leave that mark. Every day you get to do that. And if you're not intentional about it, you're going to miss your opportunity. It's going to pass you by and you're going to slowly get off course and ultimately end up somewhere where you did not want to be, where you did not intend to be. And I would hate for that to happen for you. So I ask you, what is it that you're going to do? How are you going to take advantage of the current situation? How are you going to, and I don't mean take advantage of, of people who are unfortunate. I mean take advantage of the fact that 95% of the population is going to be hiding in a corner and worrying about what's next. And you get to be the 1%, the 5%. I don't know. I just made up that number. It's not statistics. It's, It's reality. You know, people are very predictable. And you get to choose how you're going to differentiate yourself. Are you going to be like the majority Or are you going to separate yourself from them and show up in a bigger and better way? And it looks different for every single person. If you're a parent, it might just be that you are being the best parent you can be right now and you are focusing on your kids 
and you are homeschooling them and spending time with them and that's your priority and that's the way that you are showing up and you're contributing to the world. I am not judging you for that at all. I think that's noble. I think that's amazing. But if you are not a parent or that's just a part of what you do and there's more to it, there's more that you can do. If you have a team, if you lead a law firm, and you have people who work for you, who look up to you. This is an opportunity for you to do what I'm doing here on this podcast for them. This is an opportunity for you to rally your troops, for you to talk to them, give them motivation, talk positivity into their lives, give them something to keep them busy, give them a project to move them forward. Even if your client work has dried up, if you're keeping them on payroll, take this opportunity to figure out a way that your law firm can help the community, can help your client base, can create something that is valuable that can then live on when this when this thing is over and continue. Take the opportunity that you're being given, the time out that you're being given to focus on what do you want out of your law firm and what is it going to do for other people And how big do you want it to be? And how great do you want it to be? And how are you going to get it there? Create a vision for yourself. Create a vision for your firm. Take this time to focus on the future and focus on your plan. Take your personal plan and match it with your business plan and make sure that they're in harmony with each other, that they're congruent with each other. If they oppose each other, you need to make some changes. Because that's not going to work. Take this opportunity to do that instead of sitting on the couch, running out of Netflix options. And I'm not saying that my listeners are doing that. I hope that I'm attracting people who are motivated, people who are inspired, people who want to do better. But you may be sitting there wondering, well, I don't know what that is. Well, now is the time to get that clarity. Get that. Just think about it. Think about why are you here on this earth? What were you put here to do? What talents, skills, strong points do you have? What lights you up when you do it? What excites you? How do you want to impact others? What kind of influence do you want to create? Start to map that out. And see if it starts to get clear to you. See if it starts to make sense for you. And I'll go back to our book, Living Forward. Read the book. Go through the exercises. It's going to create a ton of clarity for you on exactly what it is that you should be doing. I'm going to switch gears for a moment here. Okay. Um, Didn't mean to show up on on a soapbox. And I hope that you hope that you took some of that in and took some of that uh, to heart and it's going to inspire you to take some action this week that you might not have taken otherwise. I hope that this was my ability to uh, make a mark on the world today, to continue on my course of empowering all people with wealth creation so that this and future generations can lead a better life. But I want to go to something else that has been buzzing in in the in the world of business and that is the cares act and the ppp loan now if you don't know what i'm talking about you've been hiding somewhere because everybody's talking about it but president donald trump signs a bill you know presented by the senate and the house and he signs it into law and in that bill there is this Um, special SBA 7A loan called the Payroll Protection Program Loan, the PPP loan. And that loan has a forgiveness clause. And basically what it says is is that if you uh, borrow money to pay payroll and you use it to pay payroll, uh, then the loan will be forgiven. So essentially you're borrowing the money, but it could become a grant if you use it for the right things. And everybody's running to get their PPP loan. And what's happening is, is that There's confusion in the marketplace. There's confusion about how to apply, who's eligible to apply, where to apply. Now, the way that this was structured is the banks 
are supposed to process the application and lend you the money. The SBA is backing the money. Now, each bank is left to figure out how the application process is supposed to work. And because they're the ones lending the money, they want to make sure that they're not on the hook. So they want to make sure that they're doing it correctly so that they're not left holding the bag on money they dished out that, they, that they're not going to get back. So crazy things have been happening, like Bank of America was one of the first to open up the application process, but they made a decision at the corporate level and decided to only open applications to customers who have both a business checking account with them and a some sort of loan product with them, whether it be a credit card, a line of credit, or some other loan with the bank. Now, what's crazy is that in doing so, they eliminated a large population of their customer base. Uh, for example, I have a Bank of America business credit card. I don't bank with Bank of America. I cannot apply for PPP through them. More importantly, the PPP program was opened up not just for small business, which is defined as 500 employees or less. Okay, So for those of you who are smaller than that, like you're by yourself or you have just a staff of three or four people, that doesn't sound very small at all. Uh, but that's how they define small business. You can borrow up to $10 million or two and a half months worth of payroll uh, based on your year's payroll the year before. So for somebody who's a sole proprietor who pays themselves, they have no payroll records. They have no way to prove their payroll. There's a lot of open question marks about how do you calculate what your payroll would have been or should be uh, because as a sole proprietor, you can't pay yourself on payroll. You can't, you know, there's no payroll taxes. There's no, there's no W-2. Uh, there's no, you're, you're basically just draw money from the business. And at the end of the year, you pay based on your net income, you pay taxes. Uh, but the reality is, is that um, the fact that you made money or lost money on your tax return is not indicative of how much money you paid yourself because you could have borrowed money and paid yourself. Uh, so, you know, how, how do you calculate, uh, payroll? Um, but what's happening is people are going crazy about this PPP program and they're getting angry at bank of America. They're getting angry at their own bank for not having the application ready yet or not opening it up yet. They're getting angry at the government for creating confusion with a program that is confusing. confusing. Now, at the end of the day, I'm not here to brush away the value of what the PPP is offering. But if you're a micro small business, if you're a, a sole proprietor, or, a, uh, or you have one, two, three employees, we're talking about eight weeks of payroll. We're talking about eight weeks of paying somebody. This is not, it's not the, the biggest windfall ever. It's not the mega millions for you. Now, if you have 20 people on staff, I get it. But somebody who's that size probably has the right relationship with a the bank. They're probably, they're probably okay with this PPP. But for the really small guys, the amount of energy you are expending to be angry, to be upset, to be confused is not worth it. Stop focusing on the PPP and just go out there and serve your customer, serve your client. Go out there and serve your community and the business will come. Sure, it would be nice to get a helping hand, but you know what? Nobody knows how long it's going to take for that cash to come up. To, this, to, to surface. In the meantime, you're going to be paying payroll for people that you maybe can't keep busy because you're hoping to get the PPP. You can't make business decisions on a possibility. You have to make them on the reality. So you got to make tough decisions today. You can't count these eggs before they hatch. You don't know if you're getting it. But at the same time, all of these concerns 
Don't be angry with the banks. Understand the position that they've been put in. A bill was passed and they were expected seven days later to be ready to process billions of dollars of loan applications with almost no oversight. Think about that for a moment. Put yourself in the position of the banks. Of course they're not ready. They have standard loan application procedures. They have to rewrite software. They have to create capabilities for you. And they also have to make their own internal decisions about how much risk they want to take. Because even though these are 100% guaranteed by the SBA, even though these are the SBA will pay them back for any forgiveness piece, even though they're getting paid a nice percentage on the, up, on the front end for making the loan from the SBA, they have the same questions you have. How long is it going to take for me to get my money? There's only so much they have to lend, and they still have to run their regular business operation. So if they empty their coffers to make all these PPP loans, and it takes the SBA time to refill that, to time to get them their cash infusion back, what are they supposed to do in the interim? So the banks are in a really awkward position. Now, yes, granted, there's more and more things coming out every day. The SBA has, the, the Treasury has, has indicated that they're going to backstop these loans. They're going to express money into these banks. There's a lot of things happening behind the scenes to make this better. But at the same time, why, why expend energy getting angry at the banks? And then you get angry at the government, right? The government rushed to create a bill. It had to be a bill that would pass the Senate and the House and the President. Everyone had to agree on it. To get these, these parties to agree on anything is next to impossible. And yet they managed to put together a bill that is going to put very necessary cash into the economy. First of all, it's going to send checks to many people. Um, we don't know when that's going to come. We don't, there's a lot of questions about that as well. But at the end of the day, Americans are going to get a cash infusion of $1,200 a head for a single or a married couple plus $500 a child. And that's going, you know, so if you've got three kids, you know, you're set to, to, to get uh, $3,900 bucks, a check from the IRS. Now, the way it's structured is it's an early advance of a credit that's going to be on the 2020 tax return. So if you end up earning more than $150,000 combined, that's going to be reduced to eventually be being phased out if you earn over $200,000. You know what? If you earn that much money, then you don't need it, right? You didn't need that handout from the government. Uh, but if you were eligible for it based on your 2019 income, you're going to have to pay it back at tax time. At the you know when you do your tax return, so it's important to understand how this works. But the point is, the government rushed to put this thing together, and they created a bill that, in theory, is supposed to provide help to businesses. And I believe that if that was the intention, that they will stand behind it, and it will all work itself out. That if they need to put more money into it, they will. That if they need to, you know what, if this thing goes on longer than expected, they're going to have to pass another bill. They're going to have to create a similar program for a longer period of time if they want to keep employment up. If they don't want the whole country to be unemployed, they're going to have to help businesses to pay payroll. And that is going to come at a cost to the taxpayers. But to get angry at the government for rushing to pass this bill um, and I don't I, I mean, people are saying, yeah, it was it's a it's a masked attempt to, uh, you know, it's really it's really there to to lift up the banks, to lift up the airline sector. You know what? Look at the airline sector. Look at how they they have to continue flying flights with nobody on it. My daughter just flew back from Israel. 30 people on a plane. They're losing money every time that they run that flight. But if they cut the flight completely, then those 30 people are stranded where they are. 
how amazing are these airlines who, who stood up for their customers? We're going to allow you to cancel your tickets. We're going to give you credits. We're going to give you money. You know, you put it into a bank and you can use it later. We're going to we're going to give you incentives to buy your tickets for your future airfare with no change fees, no cancellation fees. You know what? Good for them. They're they're trying to do right by their customer. They're also trying to do right by their employees. They're hemorrhaging cash. I looked at an article um United Airlines is losing how many millions a day? I'm actually going to try to pull the article up real, real quick right now while I'm on here to 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 give you that number cuz I don't remember exactly how much it was, but I think it was something like 10 either 10 million or 40 million a day. But whatever it was, it's I mean these these airlines are losing you know millions and millions of dollars every single day. And the airline sector is crucial to the United States economy. It's crucial to our existence as we know it today at, in, in mankind. Your ability to pick up and get on a plane and fly across the country, get on a plane and fly to another country, get on a plane and fly around the world is reliant on this financial help that the government's making available to the airline industry. So I ask you, does it make sense to sit there and get angry at all these people, all, all these entities? Does it help you any to get angry at the bank? Does it help you any to get angry at the government? Does it help you any to get angry at the SBA or the U.S. Treasury? Does it help you any to get angry at your employees because you have to pay them? Does it, get ang- does it help you to get angry at your clients because they're not showing up? Anger, frustration, those feelings, there's a place for them. And this is not one of them. Nobody wanted this. Nobody wanted a pandemic. Nobody wanted people dying around us. Nobody wanted to be locked in their own homes, being unable to go anywhere. Nobody wanted to get into their car, drive around aimlessly with the windows closed, and drive back home and never get out somewhere else. Yet, this is our reality right now. And getting angry and getting frustrated is not helping you. It is not beneficial to you. It is dragging you down. Take your emotion out of it. If, you, if the PPP loan or program makes sense for you, great. Make a decision on which vendor you're going to use Wait for their application to be ready and submit the application and trust the system that it will happen. And if it does not, it's not the end of the world. It's just money. It's just a tool. You can create more money. You can earn more money. If you're hanging on by such a thin thread that that money is going to make a difference, then you probably need to be making some tough business decisions anyway. If you can't make payroll, you probably need to lay some people off or furlough them or t- or discuss with them some other means or arrangements. And you know what? There's even help in that program with unemployment. Your employees, some of them might be better off on unemployment than working for you. So if you're hanging on to them just to keep just to keep them from not having an income, do the math. You might be better off letting them collect unemployment, telling them that they're just being furloughed and as soon as you can hire them back you will. Why should you have to carry that weight when the government has handed out a hand and said, "Here, let me help them." Then, if you get approved for your PPP, you still have eight weeks from when you get approved. 
hire them back at that point. They come off unemployment, they go on PPP. There's a solution to everything. There's a solution at every at every juncture, at every step. And you have to see it. You got to look for the silver lining. You got to look for the opportunity. It's not going to be there in front of your face. You have to find it. You have to look down and see it. You have to bend down and pick it up. You have to take the effort to make it happen. And I guarantee you that if that's what you focus on, you're going to come out of this a better person and you're going to, your law firm will come out of it a better entity. So I named this podcast episode Enough Already. It's time to move on. And what I just wanted to get across throughout this episode, what I wanted to share with you is there's optimism and there's pessimism. And if you focus on pessimism, if you allow anger, frustration to be your key emotions, then you're going to move backwards. You're going to come out of this a different person. You're going to come out of this in a worse position than when, than when you came in. It's not going to look pretty. It's not going to be good. It's going to be ugly. And it's not going to feel good during this process. If you approach it from optimism, if you approach it from a glass half full perspective, if you approach it from a place of peace, from a place of happiness, not happiness about the tough situation around us, but just happiness and gratitude for what you do have. Approach it from that perspective. Look for opportunity. Focus on the positive possibilities. True optimism. That is going to make you come out of this a stronger, better person. That is going to even potentially allow your firm to thrive and grow during this time because I guarantee you I'm having conversations with people that are doing exactly exactly that there are people I'm talking to that are having the best month of their of their working life right now there's opportunity there there's always opportunity there you just have to look for it you just have to be able to recognize that it's there so I invite you to look at it with this new perspective. Start each day with gratitude. Start each day thinking about what am I thankful for? What am I thankful for today? Truly thankful for that I have. And don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. And then take that energy that you create with that first exercise and be there for your family. Be there for your spouse. Be there for your kids. Be there for your business, be there for your clients, be there for your community, and just lend a helping hand. Put your hand out there and offer it. Lend your expertise to the marketplace, and you will thrive. I will see you guys on Thursday for a great interview. Take care. Have you been enjoying the show? We sure hope so. To make sure you never miss an episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button in your podcast player app. Next week, we will be back with more valuable resources and ideas on how to break the mold and take your law firm to the next level.